Hello, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to look at the Dr. Sticker program for use with the Roland sticker cutters. If you don't know what they look like, it's that one just down there. I've just done a video on this one and I'll put a link to it. Yeah, wherever the links appear on your device, there will be a clickable link somewhere that will explain all about this cutter, how it works, and how you can really mess up by not putting the cutting blade back in there properly when you're making a video for YouTube and you're not editing. Right, so anyway, this is going to be about the Dr. Sticker Plus program, which is the program which is used to control this vinyl cutter. So if I just get you framed up properly there, and there we go. Right, so this is a computer, uh, it's running Windows XP. It's January 2018. To be able to get this to work, we had to install Windows XP. We then had to go and hunt around to try to find Service Pack 2. Once we had Service Pack 2, we had to install it. Then once we'd installed that, we had to update the Windows installer to enable the Dr. Sticker we downloaded from the Roland website to actually run. <sighs> and breathe. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a nightmare a lot of the faffing about just to try to get this one program to work. So there it is on our list, Dr. Sticker Plus. So we open it up, there you go, so you get that lovely little thing. Copyright 1996 to 2001. As I said, this is 2018, so we're looking at something that's maybe 17 years old, maybe 20 years old, who knows. Um, but anyway, there we go. So this is the Dr. Sticker program, this controls the early range of the sticker SX range of cutters. I'm not sure if it works with the SV ones because I've never had an SV one so I don't actually know. So anyway, once you open up the program this is what you get. Now this area here that looks like the paper from your maths books at school, I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, let me just zoom in so you can see it a bit better. There you go, you see. It looks just like the paper you had in maths class at school. Um, it's all gridded up. That's meant to be the area that's um, the cutter is going to cut. So anything you drag and drop into there um, is actually going to be cut. So what we've got along the top here, I know I'm using the mouse but the cursor's a bit small so I use my fingers as well because they're massive. So you've got the new, so if you click on that one it'll be new, you've got the open, you've got save, you've got print, and you've got cut, copy, paste as you, as you always would do the cursor arrow for the choose an object the one to edit the what I call nodes but in here they call them polygon vertices so that's where the computer says to go from there to there as a cut if you want to change it you can just click it and drag it and it will change it. I'll explain all that in a minute text square oblong circle star rhomboid, is that what they call them? Oh, a polygon. Uh, zoom in and out. Move to back, move to front. So, for example, if you're doing a square and you want some text in the middle of it, but the square has come up and that's been filled in with black, so what you've got is just like a big black square and all of your text is hidden in behind it. If you then choose the square and you put two back, it will put it to the back, so the text will be at the front. A little bit like using layers in the Photoshop. Uh, whether you want your text to go across the screen or whether you want your text to come down the screen. I was on some vertical. Quite simple, easy program to use. So then up here we've got File, New, Open, Save, Save As, Import, Select Source, Acquire, Print, Print Preview, Print Setup, Tile In, all the normal stuff you would expect. Edit is just a normal standard edit one. View again, what would you like to see? You can see the toolbar, object info, it's all up there on the screen, object info is down here in the bottom corner. Pen color, status bar, show grid, snap to grid. If you want it to snap into place where you occasionally move an item and then it snaps into where the grid is aligned, you can choose that and it will do that. Otherwise, just leave it blank. Object, what would you like? Would you like to see text? It's just basically exactly the same as that menu there. But you can change the font and the text style. Um, we'll do a bit with the font in just a second. And help has got the contents and about. So that is basically it. It is the most easiest, simplest program I think I have ever seen in the history of the world ever. Except it's got a few little niggles. 
which we will pick up now as we go through this bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the text. So we choose text at the top. You can import images into it. Um, I must admit I haven't done a huge amount because it doesn't seem to handle EPS, AI or anything else like that. It likes the bitmaps and pings. I call them pings anyway. I don't know what other people call them. What do you call them? What do you call a PNG image? Do you call it a ping or not? Right, so anyway, onto some text. So if we write that, that's our web address in case you hadn't realized it. Go and visit us, have a look. See what we do. Um, only don't copy us, please. So there we go. So we've written up our text and we have highlighted it. So if we go to object, uh, font. Let's change it over to our font that we use, which is somewhere on the list. There we go. So we've got it like that. Um, and then you can see it like that. And we are still in text, but we need to come out of text. We need to go to the, the select one, select the object, which is there. And then if we go to object, uh, no, actually, I'll explain it here first. Because it's a bit small and we want it to be a bit larger, you'd normally click and drag on one of the side corners, so you'd click and drag. But on here, there isn't anything to which to hold it to the proportions that it's in. Right, I just had to pause the video there. I had a person at the door bringing me a new sublimation printer, which is cracking. That'll come in another video later. Right, so anyway, as I was saying, you can't, there isn't anything there to click straight away to be able to control the proportions of this. So if I go to edit and undo, edit, and we'll just put it back to that, that'll do for now. Um, so we need to go to the choose object, highlight it, and then we get to object, properties, and then you've got here where you've got width and height. Now to keep the aspect ratio, you have to click keep aspect for input, and then you can go to the width and you can change it. Now this is working, I've discovered, uh, as I try to lean across you to get to the keyboard. This is working in inches. Okay, now I can't see anywhere to change it from anything else. So that was highlight the object, object, properties, keep aspect for input. A lot of clicking about, isn't it? All right, let's put it over to eight inches. But you can also see in this, you can change the angles, the horizons, the font, and everything else like that because that's part of the properties. Okay, so we changed it over to that there now. So if we want to send that to the cutter, we go to File, Print, and you can see it's already chosen the Roland because that's plugged in. But if we click on the properties, you can see that you can change the size of the cutting area. Now this is the width of the vinyl that's going to be put in as you can see down here on the preview button. So, but this is in millimeters. You can change it to inches if you want to, but it automatically comes up as being the millimeters. So you need to be able to flip your brain around as you're using this program between inches and the millimeters, which if you're English and if you're over 30 I suppose in England is quite easy to do but if you're not English and you're not used to having the two different kind of systems it might get a little bit confusing so anyway you would change what the width of your vinyl is in there and ours is 30 oh. and you would so obviously 30 centimeters relates to 300 millimeters and you would change the length of the vinyl as well the maximum length it can take is one meter, so 1,000 millimeters. Um, and off the top of my head, I don't know what that is in inches. So there are a couple of other things. You can't change. Oh, you can change the speed of it and the offset of it. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. There you go. You learn something new as you go around. In tools, you can actually change the speed um, of the cutter. Not that you would really want to because... You know, it's, it just goes as it goes. But anyway, there you go. So that is that. You click OK there, and then you click OK, and it will send it out to the printer. So I hope that helps. Um, yeah, actually, there was something else I was going to say. That was it, weeding. There isn't anything I have seen that does like an easy weed or that 
automatically adds in anything for the weeding. So if you want to put a weeding box around that to make your weeding a bit easier, you have to go to rectangle and you have to to physically click and hold, drag your box around to be able to get the rectangle for the weeding. Okay, so that is basically the Doctor Sticker program. There's not much to it. If you want to know anything about it, just go and play with it. It's dead easy. We couldn't get it to work with Windows 7 or Windows 10. It had to, but on Windows XP, it just booted up straight away. So yeah, there you go. It's an old program. If you want to use it, it, it works. Um, but yeah, it's dead easy. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. Leave us a comment down below. Ask us a question if you want to. Give us a thumbs up. That'd be great. Subscribe and see more of our great videos as we look over antique vinyl cutters. No, not really. We're not trying not to go down that line. We're going to look at some newer ones that we're bringing into the new side job that's coming soon. So anyway, thanks for watching to the end. See you soon. Bye-bye.